All right, guys, we're recording. So welcome to a special Monday night call. So this is webinar format, so it's a little bit different. Um, so if you're watching this recording, you're just gonna see us, uh, me and our special guest, John, tonight. And um, so yeah, but we have a lot of people on and we promoted this as a special call because we have, John, say your last name for me so I just do not butcher it. <laughs> it's Stankowitz. Say it one more time. Stankowitz. Thank you. <laughs> Sounds like it's like it's like stank o wits. Like do the stanky leg. Like yeah, that? we can just go with the stanky leg. That's cool. <laughs> awesome. Oh, hold on, I can't hear anything. I just want to check hearing. Make sure everybody can hear. Because I'm seeing. Make sure that your volume's up if you can't hear. Because everybody else is uh, being able to hear it. It seems. All right. Cool. Yeah. So all good on this end. So I was blessed, you guys, to meet John. Um, and I know that we posted his transformation. Hello. I didn't even know about that situation when I got to meet him in Austin, Texas. And he is um, in the top, uh, so the 18 to you know 25, so we have our starters 18 to 35. And then the 18 to 25, they have their special group. So he's been in the top 10 income earners there. He's a two-star golden circle crystal executive, and he is just amazing. And when I met him, he just, ha he just oozes goodness. You can just tell that he's just excited about life. And you know we have a lot of people that are doing some um, star parties uh, in their own community and getting people together but he's just not even just in start just at leadership level the way he communicates um, I told him he was gonna fall in love with breathing he thought I was crazy so he said that I could also say he's a semi uh, breather now too so uh, a lot of people on this some um, call have been introduced um, to breathing and some retreats that we have done some not yet so yeah John just take it away just share your story with us um, I mean ice body you know, honorable mention, you look freaking amazing. Like, how did you find Isogenics? Share your story with us. And uh, yeah, then we'll do some Q&A and anything else you want to share in your heart. So thanks for joining us tonight. Yeah, absolutely. And thanks for having me, Casey. Um, yeah, my whole story with Isogenics, it's pretty funny because I got involved at a young age. I got involved when I was 18 years old into the network marketing industry. And it kind of like stumbled into me. Um, my mom has always been an entrepreneur her whole life. She used to own a bakery. She did direct sales, like going to different homes and doing home parties. And she, you know, she runs a marathon. She's so healthy. And it got to a point where, you know, the business wasn't serving her. They got to the top of it. They were um, top producers in the company and they weren't even making a six figure income. Um, they were running marathons. The products that the company had to offer just didn't correlate with a healthy lifestyle. And her and her best friend went out and handpicked Isogenics, A, because they saw you know, the amazing comp plan we have and be obviously the amazing products. And so it was funny. We went to the Outer Banks that year. I was 18 years old, about to go to college. And my mom and Cindy, Cindy Walter, I don't know if you guys know who she is. Um, they sat, sat me down. They're like, we're going to get you involved with this company. It's going to be amazing. Like, this is such an amazing opportunity. And I was just like, I'm going to the beach. Like, you guys are out of your minds. I didn't want to hear any of it. And, um, so, you know, they got involved, they started taking off with it right off the bat. And I went away to college that fall. And ironically enough, my best friend came to me with a different network marketing opportunity. And since it was my best friend, I was willing to hear him out. And, um, you know, a couple months later, here comes $600 worth of energy drink shipped to our front door. <laughs> and, you know, my mom was like, she's pretty pissed off about it, but she still supported me. And, you know, the real reason I got involved with network marketing in the beginning was for the business, 100%. I saw... And if, you know, we're doing a lot with the 45 second presentation on our team. I saw the power of two people, getting two people, getting two people, getting two people and that duplication and what can happen. And I was so excited. I was in my dorm. I couldn't even sleep at night when I figured out what it was all about. And I spent that whole semester. It was about six months. I was with that first company um, on the weekends of college. I was driving all over the state doing events, um, talking to everyone I could up late on, on it was Skype that we had then. Um, just spreading the message and, and showing everyone the opportunity we had. And, you know, six months in, I just didn't really align with the integrity of that company that I was first with anymore. And I saw what my mom and Cindy were doing with Isogenics and how amazing it was. Um, not only, you know, how many people were having amazing results physically and transformations physically, but also financially. There were so many people on our, on our team making a ton of money and really killing it with the business. And so that's when I decided to kind of transfer my efforts over to Isogenics and I'll completely admit, you know, I was a little bit, um, 
quiet for a little while. Cause I talked to everyone I knew I was 18 years old about network marketing, my first company. And, you know, I kind of was like a little, a little quiet about it. I, I was like hesitant to get back fully into it. And I did a lot of other things in the meantime. Um, you know, I started a ton of different traditional businesses in college, which was great because I learned how much better of an opportunity we have here and how much, um, you know, how much easier it is for people to get involved and actually do this thing. I mean, for example, one of them, um, I went to the University of Connecticut and wearing the hoodie right now and it's in the middle of nowhere. We started up this bus company to bus students to off campus events. And me and a few friends, we put in pretty much all the money we had at the time to pull together, got LLCs, bank accounts, advertising materials, all this stuff. And our first event, um, a student ended up puking on the bus and we got shut down because the bus companies wouldn't be in business with us anymore. And we lost all that money. And, you know, that was a great taste to see what it's like in traditional business, how much upfront capital you need to put in to, and, and you could just fail at any time. Like there's no guarantee of anything. So, you know, I did a lot of different things like that. And eventually, um, I jumped full board onto network back into network marketing. Um, a big thing was actually celebration two years ago that really pulled me back in. And also Casey and I do a lot of work with Rod Harrison. Um, his programs were something that really helped me jump back on board and really like just put my full commitment into this. And also just realizing we're serving people in, in my previous business. It was a lot about like, everyone was like, you're going to drop out of school. You're going to drive all these BMWs and these fancy cars. Like, and everyone was just kind of promoting the wrong thing. And I just stopped making it about me and made it about serving other people. And that's really where a huge shift occurred. And, um, you know, after that celebration, I went to one of Rod Harrison's top 50 events. And that's really where I got into the vision of things and creating healthy habits. I decided to commit to winning Ice Body. Um, and in that time, too, we, we formed a uh, team for the Championship Cruise Challenge, which we ended up in 20th place for that. So got to go on the cruise. Um, I ended up getting Ice Body honorable mention, although I didn't win uh, finalists. And I also ended up being a star top 10 income earner that year. So, um, and that was, you know, after I, I skipped this whole part after college, just from the residual money I was making from this business, I was able to move to Italy for an entire year, just living off the income I was making from, you know, residually from this business, from what I'd been building. And, you know, I spent an entire year traveling Europe. I came back and moved to California and it's just, it's just been so awesome what this has been allowing me to do at such a young age. Ah, I love it. And I mean, you think about, I mean, being able to go to Italy and like live on that residual income and, you know, just being a, like that story though, it's, you know, when I hear people talk about like, you know, the work and like how network marketing is hard or what it is, I'm like, compared to what? Like, you know, knowing some people that operate traditional businesses, those brick and mortar businesses, and what goes into all the moving pieces and how good we have it, you know, and, and you got to see the other side of, of being involved in, you know, company and network marketing, maybe that didn't have the type of integrity, you know, that started from the top with Jim and Kathy and Eric and John Anderson. And so to have what it is that we have, how it's so deserving of everything we have, you know, because of, of what it, of what it offers, you know, on that other side, what would you say, you know, a lot of questions always are with being a starter. Um, what, how do you, how do you talk to young people then? Like, how do you find motivated individuals, internally motivated individuals like yourself? Like, what do you look for? What are questions that you ask in that 45 second presentation? Like, are you going around to colleges or it's just, you're just attracting people? Like, talk a little bit on that. I know that's a question people have. Yeah. Um, you know, it's funny because I've gone through a lot of different phases in my business with the types of people I look to attract into it. And, you know, the first business right off the bat, I remember just talking to everybody because I was brand new to network marketing and um, I was just talking to everyone I could and just the excitement and the momentum I was building just made, attracted people and made them want to be involved. Um, and, you know, to be completely honest, I don't focus on really people that are my age and younger anymore in a college environment. Most of my business is built of, um, honestly, middle-aged women. Um, and I really like to attract into my business now people that are like, like Casey, like the upper 20s, younger 30s. Um, and my, my reasoning is just because I think that those people have gone through experiences. They've gone through the pain of maybe going to college, graduating, getting their dream job. And then after a few years, they're like, this sucks. Like, this isn't what I want to do. And, and it's true though. And, and they, they've had, they, they like have gone through it and they, they've experienced it. And a lot of people 
that were in college that I found because I recruited a lot of college kids into my business and not a lot of them stayed. And a lot of it's immediate gratification, I think. Um, but it, it's just, I think older people that have just gone through the experiences more and have, um, you know, can see the vision are a little bit more mature are more likely to take this and commit because it's a business. It's not something you just get involved with and, you know, it takes off overnight from doing nothing. You need to commit to it and treat it like a business for it to grow and work. So I think those people that are a little more mature are, are the people that I rather would have in my business. And also it speaks to the culture because a lot of the top leaders on our team are um, women, you know, in their forties and fifties. And there's a lot of amazing leaders that, you know, people come in and they just look up to them. So I think that's a huge part of it as well because of the culture on my team. Love it. Love it. Love it. And I also heard something I think I, I wrote down um, is get somebody other than a parent. If you're a parent and you're trying to get your kids involved, get a, get a friend, not the parent. Yeah. It's all your mom now. And then your friend's like, Hey man, you're like, yeah. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's honestly, that's a question I get a lot. A lot of parents always are like, my kid wants to do or No, I want my kid to do this. Like, what do I tell them? What do I do? And then, like, you know, it's, there's nothing you can say or do. They just need to kind of, you know, once they watch for a while, then something needs to happen. You don't know if it's like they, they get their first job or they go to an internship and they do it for the summer and they're like, this isn't what I want to do the rest of my life. Like if they have to go through some type of significant, significant emotional event or decide themselves. There's no real like convincing them. And, and there's no something you say to just get your kid to want to be in and be involved, you know? Right. It's like, Oh, mom, mom's doing it. <laughs> I'm not listening. I'm not listening. <laughs> yeah, I'll listen. What do you, what would you say as far as with like your your leadership then? Um, you know, I know that when we were texting a little bit too, just like on on how how are you like leading like that forty five second presentation? Like, what is the the way that you would say or qualities that you're looking for on like you know who you're like when you're locking arms with somebody and then like just that leadership path that you're running with with people? Like, what do we do when we get people involved? Yeah, like they're they're ready to go. Like they say yes, they show commitment. Like, are you looking for certain things that they're committing to then, you know, and then they make those commitments? Are you asking for them to commit to certain things or certain actions or events or? Well, I think it's really important to figure out when you get someone involved, what they're looking for out of this opportunity, because everyone is looking for something different. There could be people that want to make an extra 100 or $200 a week. And there could be people that want to take this business and do what we do with it. You know what I mean? Blow it up entirely and have this replace their income. And depending on that answer is that that's completely dictates like where I treat them from there because you're not going to work with someone the same that just wants to make a couple hundred dollars is if they want to make, you know, an entire income from this. So that's the first thing. And if someone it does want to take this and build it and blow it up, I think the crystal map is huge. That's like one of the best tools to use. So you can visualize getting to executive um, and just right off the bat, building that momentum when you first get started and just blowing it up right away and creating that momentum and creating that excitement is what I aim to do with these people and just locking arms with them and running with them. Um, I think those are the most important, definitely the most important things to do when, you know, I'm first getting people involved. If that answer, does that answer your question? Yeah, for sure. Do you guys do, do you do a lot of like, um, in person, um, events? Do you do, is it online? Are you guys building? Do you do, you know, belly to belly? Yeah. For me personally, whenever there's someone that wants to build a business and granted that they're in the area that I can meet them, I like to meet them in person and start building that relationship with them in person. Um, but no, we do a lot of definitely a lot of sip and samples, a lot of events. Um, a lot of this, like I like to get on three way calls a lot with my people and help them, um, talk to their prospects. Um, we do, you know, Facebook live events. Um, you know, we have a bunch of different people go in. I don't know if you've done that with your team. Um, you know, like sharing every few minutes, like something different about a product or a testimony or something about the business. Um, so we build, there's a lot of different tools we use and it really depends too if it's someone that is close to me, like geographically or if they're far away, because if they're close, I like to personally do things in person. I like to meet people and show them I'm real, I'm genuine. And um, that excitement that you, you get in the air, you can't really be replicated, you know, over the phone or online. Mm -mm, certainly can't. What would you say as far as if, if somebody was on the brink of feeling discouraged on what, you know, the, the next three no's that they get is just going to totally take them out of the game because they feel deflated. 
and seeing what you've seen, you know, I've, I've, I, I know Cindy, you know, I got to meet your mom and just these, these women that, that have been in this industry that have been entrepreneurs, what they've created, you know, in their life and their families, you know, you, your best friends, like, you know, what you guys are building and like knowing though, like what's on the other side when you can push through, even when, when you hit that deception, when you feel deflated, like what is something that you would just say, look, if you just knew if I could just share this, Right. Like after they've already got in and they're starting to build a little bit. Yeah. yeah. And they're feeling like they're, they're in a, a lull or they're deflated or they're feeling discouraged or in deception. Right. Yeah. And a lot of what we learn, um, you know, when they get to that point, it's important, I think, to celebrate it with those people because that's just, that's a step in the growth cycle. That's a, that's a, a, something that we all go through. I mean, I've gone through it. I'm sure you've gone through it. I know my mom has, Cindy has. Every leader has gone through a phase where they're feeling like, they're like, oh, maybe this isn't for me. And that negative self-talk in your head, your unconscious mind is like trying to pull you back and keep you comfortable and keep you safe. And when that happens with people, it's important to kind of like let them know that that's a natural part of the cycle and celebrate it with them, you know, celebrate it and, and kind of pre-framing that they're going to get to that point because we all do there's no hiding when we first get in we're all so excited we're ready to go and like you said you get a couple of no's and people are like well maybe this isn't for me and getting that vision in the beginning and that rock solid why is how you push through that deception and just celebrating it because it's going to come but you know when that that's what i was saying before too like when someone first gets involved and they give you your why they're like i want to replace my income because i want to stay home with my kids and be able to travel freely that's when you pull up that why and you say well look like this is what you said you wanted you want to be able to you know replace your income go on these vacations freely get away from your boss this is what it's going to take and this is something we all go through and you know it's you don't want to avoid it i think a lot of people want to just kind of stick their head in the sand when people uh start going through deception but it's something that, that happens and it's important to embrace it with that person and push through it with them you know i've always said if you don't kind of hit those moments then you probably are not in enough action <laughs> um you know it's like if you don't go through those just wall kicking moments at times i mean i just i remembered in the beginning just breaking down crying like this there's no way i can do this like what are you thinking casey like you're just a nurse like you can't build this you know people returning i had a good friend tell me i was selling snake oil like because i'm in one of those things like network you know what i mean and if you don't have that that rock solidness yet and even maybe especially for somebody who hasn't up as close as you are, you know, were two success stories up front, you know, in, in your personal life. It's like, man, it can just knock us back. Um, so for anybody listening to that, you guys, deception, it, it happens. It's okay. <laughs> um, what would you say, you know, something that I, I heard too, it was like, was it healthy mind and body that you were, were doing that really, because you said when you started doing, you know, some of those programs and just re reprogramming yourself, like what was, what was then when you were like, all right, I'm doing the cruise challenge. I'm going to be the ice body champion. I'm going to freaking be in the top 10 of my 18 to 25 starters. Like what, what was it, what did that look like to get that mindset to make those type of commitments and to hit those freaking commitments all in like the time frame? Right. Well, I'll date it back a little because I was saying like my first, once I got involved in my the first network marketing business, I started plugging into personal development and that that point I knew like I'm just not going to be going to corporate America, getting a regular job or anything like that. And, you know, I ended up graduating with my degree in applied math, in applied mathematics and economics from UConn. And just, you know, like I said, through just building this business on the side, it produced residual income from me. And, um, you know, I went to Italy. I ate too much cheese, pasta, pizza, wine, all that stuff. <laughs> and I wasn't in the greatest shape after that. And I just wasn't being professional about my business. And I moved to California that summer. I went to a celebration. I was just ready for a change. And I remember sitting down with Cindy and my mom and we're just like, well, like, what are we going to do? Like, we were just brainstorming, like, how can we take this to the next level? And my idea at the time was I want to commit to winning the ice body. And, you know, it's crazy when you commit to something, the things that start attracting into your life. Uh, about a week later, Cindy had set up a top 50 event with Rod in Ohio. Um, and she was, and her and, my mom, her and my mom were like, you need to come out here for this. So I booked a plane ticket. I went to the event. So it wasn't actually a healthy mind and body. It was this entire top 50 thing, which is a weekend seminar. Um, it was two days. I think it was like six or eight hours a day. He kind of just went over everything he does, inspired. Um, and just went over his content. And at the end, it put us into a six week program where we were on calls with him weekly, doing weekly work. And I'd known like, you know, you commit to something and you're like, great, now how am I gonna do it? 
And this is exactly what I needed because his programs are all about getting your vision straight, breaking your old habits, forming new habits and following through to the end. So um, with, with the isobody, I'd come, I'd come from the Italy place, you know, I'm all bloated and, and gross. And I was just like, this is what I'm going to do. Um, that program really helped me with the vision and identifying what I was doing that wasn't serving me and just intentionally starting to build the habits every single day. And this all was packaged together. It was the ice body. It was the championship cruise, which really put my business back on track because I was so intentional about prospecting, about reaching out to people, about following up, about being a better leader. And just by doing those things every single day, it's just become a permanent habit still to this day, just from, you know, the, that six weeks of just doing the action and, and doing those little those things every day. It's really as simple as that. Yeah, we, we've done top 50s. And so we have a lot to okay. do on that. Yeah, and I've seen some massive um, changes. And it is, it's that, it's that, uh, that self-sabotage that we take ourselves through, you know, that, there's that old identity of who we thought that we were when we're trying to, you know, become um, all that we can be. It's like that, you know, that drunk monkey is um, David Woods and, and other people call it. You said the word, you know, commitment and intentional. I, I've become obsessed with the word intentional. Um, there's a, a book, The Power of Intention by Wayne Dyer. That book changed my life. Um, and he says that, you know, there's these, these seven faces of intention. Um, he says that, you know, everything, if you look at everything is creative, if you look at everything is, is beautiful, right? In its own way, what you can learn from anything. Um, you look at everything is love, kindness, um, that everything is meant to be expansive, right? That everything's abundant. And if you're intentional about putting that power when you're being intentional about something, but if those are the faces of intention, then you receive back all of that. And I was like, so I've like done this whole thing around intention now for the last few years. And it's so powerful when you can be intentional about something because those are, and so then you receive what you put out. And when you commit, there's a poem about commitment that I've read before, but it's like when you commit to something, these mountains move. They do like these forces, unseen forces that you could not have predicted how it's going to happen because you know that commitment is there. And it's like, I remember when I fully committed to building ice today, it's like the floodgates just, it, they had to, it was, it, it couldn't have not happened, you know, um, because it was like, I was like, I'm doing it. I didn't care how long it took, what I had to do. Of course I put my goals up and, you know, I put like some time frames and stuff too, but it was like, it didn't even matter if I didn't hit them because I was going to keep going. And it's like that there's a response from the universe, from God, from there's a response to that, that you can like, that it, it knows and it starts just delivering the people, <laughs> right? And the, the ideas and the inspiration. What does a day look like for you? Like with, when you're being intentional or like if you're in a, either a 90 day game plan, let's say, okay, what does a day look like in a 90 day game plan for you versus what does a day look like for you just kind of being in your consistent daily build? Right. Well, I've, I thought I'm a huge, um, uh, so, like I love morning routines. I started doing those probably in the past few months and like that's huge for me and that so every day I start the same. I don't look at my phone when I wake up. I go, I have my shake, eat my breakfast, I do my reading, um, I do our programs that we have with Rod and I just make sure not to get because like once once you pick up your phone in the morning and look at it, you have all these texts and things that are just demanding you and pulling you and immediately your attention is just elsewhere and you're not in your own mind and in like in your own body and focus on yourself. You start comparing yourself to others and letting other people just pull your demand away. So that's a huge thing for me. So at least for the first hour, I just don't look at my phone. I, I read, I, I do everything to get my head in the right place, do my gratitude. Um, and then I've really changed recently on how I'm prospecting. So I'm really big on Instagram now. And, um, that's where a lot of my prospecting occurs. Um, through posting, through, you know, just connecting with new people that share similar interests and reaching out to them. Um, so, I mean, I, I don't even have a set number of people that I reach out to per day. I'll go through like right now where I'm at with my Instagram again, like probably like 50 followers a day. And I go in and I go through every single one of those followers, like look through their profile, find common interests. And I reach out to them personally. I don't really do like an auto DM or anything like that. I'll, I'll genuinely compliment them. Like say it's someone who's really into fitness and as a personal trainer, I'll be like, Hey, Kim, I love your profile and your passion around fitness. Um, is this, are you a personal trainer full time? And just start conversations like that. 
with the intent to lead them. To, I have a little six minute video I have just kind of explaining my story, how the general concept of network marketing works. And I get them to watch a video and get it onto the phone. But to answer your question better, um, during a 90 day action plan, I'll be intentional. I'll do a matrix of, I'll do five, five reach outs, five new connections, um, three follow-ups, three presentations, and like be strict about that. And then just in the regular flow, like I'm just making sure I'm connecting with new people every day and reaching out to new people every day and having conversations. And so that, you know, the, like there's always people in my pipeline. There's always people to talk to follow up with and have presentations with. And when you say presentation, what, what is that for you? Is that like doing a presentation where you're like drawing something out? Is that sharing a tool? Like what is, what is a presentation? Well, yeah, for the most part, where I'm at with like my Instagram prospecting that I'm doing, um, getting them on the phone and, and talking with them. And like, it's a series of different, like when I get on the phone, I don't really have an agenda. I just genuinely want to connect with the person, see what they're about. And in my ideal prospecting call, they're probably talking 70 to 80% of the time. I'm just asking questions and pre-qualifying them and seeing if this is really a good fit for them. Because obviously we know not this is isogenics isn't for everyone. Network marketing isn't for everyone. And I'm not trying to force people into my business. I'm trying to actually connect with people that are, are going to be an asset and benefit from this. And, and um, so I ask a lot of questions with people and uh, just kind of figure out where they're at and what their goals are. Mm. But yeah. yeah, so I do, yeah, like a, a phone call and then, you know, a Zoom and I'll, I'll draw out the compensation plan for people. I like to send out um, the Slovens compensation plan video to people. But, and then, like I said, the little six minute video I made just kind of, and I think that I like that just because people see me talking and hear my story. And then when I connect with them the next level, it's like we already had an interaction. And in the video, you kind of like, I came through with my maximum energy. So like, that, that's just leveraging yourself and saving your own time. And, you know, like you, you get tired sometimes and it can be difficult to come through with the, all that energy every single time you're talking. So I think stuff like that's huge. Yeah. I'm loving that right there, you know, cause it's, we do, uh, or, um, you know, sometimes some three way messages with people too, or connections and sharing your story. And so it's like every single time, like recording that, but yeah, man, just having that video, like, boom, on your like recorded on that today. I love that. Something that I wrote down, that I had God bumps when you said is network marketing isn't for everyone. I'm looking for people to, that are an asset, right? That can be a benefit. Like, and think about that though. How many of us are, have that mindset, right? Think, and that's a really great question to ask ourselves. We look for just everybody or just trying to get like everybody or are we taking the time to qualify people that that is something so massive because it can be very disheartening and draining you know when we're trying to work with everybody um you know pull somebody if network marketing is not for them or isogenics because we want it so badly for people so i love that that statement right there network marketing isn't and for everybody real quick casey yeah. some of the verbiage i love to use when i send that video or before i even send it and this is like back to eric Warre, like an if i would you um, I say, like, I'll talk to them. It'll get to the point where I'll be like, you look exactly like the type of person I look for to work with. Do you keep your options open for additional streams of income? Most of the time people say yes. I say, great. If I sent you a quick six minute video of me explaining um, more about what I do, would you be open to watching it? And most of the time people say yes. And then I say, great. And, and I tell them, I'm like, if this, and after I send it, I say, if this is something that interests you, we can talk further. And if not, it's completely cool. And I like sending that because people don't feel pressured. They watch it. They're like, all right. Like, and, and if they don't like it, that if it's not something that seems like it's for them, then that's completely fine because I don't want to, you know, waste my time with people that aren't serious about this. Our time is valuable. Absolutely. It is. How, what would you say to like, were you, what, what happened in your organization when you shifted from being mainly product possibly in the beginning was it more product was it always business or like have, was it ever like a little bit more product and then now a little bit more business or was did you notice a shift when you started talking more opportunity yeah it's funny because my first business i don't even think i talked about the product once and it just didn't matter at all and we were just strictly business and we had massive growth not a lot of retention, um, but I think that, that goes back more to like we were in college. I, I think that's different. Um, but then, so when I first got into isogenics and really building during that time that I was um, uh, competing for Isobody, I became a certified personal trainer and I was pretty much all product. I was 
um, posting my workouts, posting what I was eating. And that was what I was focused on on social media. And that attracted a ton of people. And although I talked, I always shared to people how to at least get their products paid for no matter what. And most of those people that entered during that time um, became a consultant at most. And most of them really didn't share the products with anybody. And switching to focus on the business, I find that I don't enroll as many people, but the people that I do enroll, um, you know, it's way more exciting because they're, they want to link arms with you and actually build. And that's where the duplication is everything in this business. So definitely found that, you know, like I said, I'll be completely transparent, less enrollments for sure. Um, because you know, the product is what 80 to 85% of what makes up our organizations. And I don't ever, like if someone wants a transformation or wants to get on the products, I would never be like, no, if you're not, if you're not doing the business, you can't do the products. But, um, yeah, like it's, it's just when you focus on the business people, that's only a way smaller percentage of the people that do network marketing. But when you do find those people and like in the 45 second presentation, if you focus on finding five people to link arms with and build this and run with it, who enroll five and teach them to enroll five people and teach them to enroll five people. That's where the true duplication happens in this. And, and it, it's a difference between being in sales and being in duplicatable network marketing and building residual income. And that's by Don Fela. Yes, the 45 second presentation. Um, she's, I don't even know, to be honest with you. I, I'm terrible. Yeah, um, uh, that, it, is, it is, yes. Yeah, Don, so I was actually on a, on a cruise with Don Fela once, um, and his wife, Nancy, I believe her name was. And it was like an isogenics uh, cruise that uh, Bert and Betty Randall do every year. If anybody wants to go on an isogenics cruise, go, uh, reach out to Bert and Betty Randall. They host it every year. And the families were on there as guests. And that is where they showed me, they, they were like 90% of people who do network marketing don't understand it. And they were like 100% of people who don't know, certainly don't understand it. And that was the concept that where I started really showing people, um, I use the numbers four who find four, um, you know, two who find two, but I just do four who find four to make it go a little bit quicker and um, kind of to that BD. I remember that changing my business um, to just that, that concept. Um, but I, you know, the 45 second presentation, I don't know that I've actually, maybe I did read that. That's the book that I read. But Dave MacArthur said it the other day too. So I put, I, this, it will be. Well, that, that's pretty much what you're talking about. Just like. Okay. The two, finding two, yeah, so. Well, that's a, that's, that's a book. Dave MacArthur just said it. You just said it. So I'm like, I'm going to have to go back to it. Maybe it was one that I read, but I just remembered hearing that. So cool. Is there any questions that you guys want to share? You're getting a lot of love. We definitely would love to see your video. Yeah, so um, I will send you the YouTube link to that. Ooh. And then, yeah, and I think I have it on my, in my Instagram bio as well. I'll type my um, Instagram name if anyone would like okay. to. Cool, yeah, you know, we're all going to be following you and, and checking me out. I got some text messages of how cute you are, so just so you know. <laughs> getting, getting those text messages. Um, what video is your team using to take a look? So maybe not the video if you're sending, like in, if your team doesn't have a video, what what's videos are you promoting for your team to kind of just share? And are you sending videos then too always before you get on a phone? Are you asking them questions before and then video or touch on those two for me? Um, what I, so like I said, like I've done so many like trial and error with so many things where I'm at right now. Um, I like to send them my personal video, my six minute video for when I'm prospecting. And my other favorites that we have as resources are Isogenics Explained with the Dunskys. That one's phenomenal for product users. Yeah, that one's amazing. That almost eliminates every single objection you're going to get before you even get on the phone with people, which that answers my other question. I like to send them something before we get on the phone. Um, and then another one of my, that's amazing. I don't know if you saw the brand new one they just put out and I can't think of the name of it. Yeah. It's on Ice Movie. We did a launch party on Saturday and I hadn't seen it before. The girl I was like, I love this video. <laughs> yeah, that one, that one is amazing as well. We saw it at the, we always at a super Saturday last weekend in Boston and they played it and I was like, wow, this is unreal. So, um, yeah, I like to send them a video just so like, because if they see it and they're just not interested at all, I don't want to even take my time to get on the phone because then like, what's going to be the point? So that's like a nice way to pre-qualify, eliminate some objections, and then kind of have something to like talk about and have a basis of where your conversation is going to go. And then what about for your team? So let's say your team doesn't mm -hmm. have their story yet. Are, are those are the, so they're using that video and the other one, those are the two. Well, really yeah. So for our team, like I said, a lot of my team is older women. Um, I, I made that video largely in part because a lot of people ask me to share my story with um, younger people and like you 
time, you know, we don't have time to do that every single time. So I made that video for that purpose. Um, and I know a lot of people love the Isogenics Explained and then the, the new one that just came out. But, and then another one that a lot of people use is Why Isogenics. I love that one as well. And that one's been around a little longer. Coolio, Coolio. What are some questions you typically use to qualify a prospect? If you... um, well, I like to see, I like to figure out if people are entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial already. Um, that's an interesting question because I feel like every conversation I have is so different. Um, I kind of just go with like what they're about. If they're a personal trainer, a, a huge one is always, do you keep yourself open to additional streams of income? That one's massive because if they do, then obviously we have something that's perfect for them. And uh, back when it was in terms of product, it would just be like, um, I would just ask them if they would, they're interested in taking their health to the next level or, you know what I mean? Like, and, and always kind of based on the scenario, like when I'm with a person, you can kind of tell, I feel like intuitively, like, or, and, and just visually, like what someone's weight loss, if they want to lose weight, if they're going to want to put on muscle, if they're going to be interested in healthy aging. And I kind of like guide the, the conversation that way. Um, just because like, I mean, obviously that's what they're going to be looking for. You don't want to waste your time talking about all these different things when they're going to be looking for one of them. So yeah. I feel like kind of just, you can kind of gauge just, that's an interesting question. I never really thought about like just, just direct questions I ask. I guess it's different every single time. Just, well, and I would imagine when you're, intentionally listening to somebody and they're sharing like with you i mean you really you know i love the statement let your prospect determine your presentation mm -hmm. you know like oh let your prospect determine your presentation so that would really i'm sure always guide and then you know put in there even if it's like obviously you know a bomb might put in there something about being a parent and you know we're not so then that's a, a different question you know so i i know i always like to to listen to it. i don't have necessarily the set but i remember in the beginning of my build i did have questions printed out on my desk when I would do phone calls, I had 10 questions. Um, I'll have to go back and find those. They might even still be in the files so for you guys. Would you like, would you run down every single time these 10 questions? Uh-uh, no, it was just like, um, I had coached with Jeffrey Combs and he had these set of qualifying questions that you would ask people. And so, you know, it was just, yeah, do you keep your options open type one or, you know, on a scale of one to 10, just to kind of be a guidance reference if you're somebody and you're really nervous so you can kind of have that baseline. You guys, I used to buy leads. I would do any, like, I didn't know how to build this business. I had a freaking sign in front of my house. I would prospect every single mom that came up for Halloween. I had a sign on my door. I would pounce on every single person that would come into the gym. Um, every single gym on bake. I was an absolute train wreck. Oh my God. <laughs> I was committed. <laughs> the universe, God's like, that girl is committed. We're going to reward her with some stuff, man, because she's looking like an absolute fool. <laughs> That's so funny. I had to have <laughs> I know, right? Uh, good stuff. Good, good times. Good times. Well, I think, yeah, I think um, like you're saying, like I was saying before, like it, uh, my ideal um, interaction with a prospect is talking twenty percent of the time or less. Like, like you were saying, like let the prospect determine the presentation and just get good at just genuinely connecting with people and asking questions. And there's no just set questions. It's just like you kind of just ask questions and listen and give genuine feedback. But like when people are talking. Don't just think what you're going to say next. Just truly and genuinely listen to them and everything that they want and that they're looking for is going to pour out into you. Like that's, it's as simple as that. I, I love the statement, listen to understand versus like listening just to like respond or react, you know, like really, if we can listen to understand, I believe that like your soul will guide you in, in asking and leading you in what's the best way to then serve this person with the next question, you know, that you could ask, that it can resonate with them. And if you can get on a level of listening to understand and getting on like the resonance of somebody's frequency, that's what Bob Proctor says, like in sales, nobody's talking about the law of vibration. Nobody's talking about like frequency and it's like sales, it should be the number one thing because if you can get on that person's level of connecting with them genuinely connecting. I loved what you said. You said you don't have an agenda. 
you were like, I don't even have an agenda, you know, just to get on there and connect. And you guys, people are going to feel that from John. Like it, it's something that can be felt when somebody doesn't have an agenda and you're genuinely thinking, my gosh, I could bless this person if, if they're looking to be blessed with what it is that I have. And then it can become like a, a dance and a game versus like this tedious thing of having a prospect. Oh my God. <laughs> you know? So at least that's been a, a flow for me. What, um, I would love to say for people who uh, have not come to uh, do any breathing uh, work, let's say, I told him like that breathing is like the greatest thing in the world. He's absolutely going to love it. He was like, this girl's absolutely lost her mind. She's crazy. Then he did some breathing with Ashley, um, who did our last Michigan retreat. So we have some people on here. What would you say that breathing experienced that for anybody coming to one of our future retreats or to experience breathing? What would you just uh, leave a little, um, excitement of what to look forward to for anybody who's looking for one of our next breathing things that our retreats do. Yeah, it was hysterical because I've always wanted, <laughs> I've always wanted to do some type of like meditation, breathing exercise, something like that. And I just never have for some reason. And the first, the first day they did the session, um, Cindy Walter went and did it and she comes back and she's like, she's like, I don't know what happened. I was, I was shaking and crying hysterically. And like, I, I just couldn't control myself. And I'm like, like what the like and I have Casey in my ear saying breathing so like that's all you have to do and you're gonna be successful in life is just breathe. And I'm like, all right, like I'm gonna give this a shot. And I went in there just completely open minded and just was doing exactly what Ashley was telling us to do. And like halfway through I just had the craziest sensations all throughout my body. Like I, I don't know if you guys have seen Dra Dragon Ball Z, but like it felt like I could shoot like balls of energy out of my hands. And it's crazy because like leading up to this, I was just so skeptical and wasn't buying it at all. And, and when it was over, I sat up and I was just looking at all the people I was doing it with. And I was just like, oh my God. I was like, this is definitely real. And it was hysterical because only three out of six of us had an experience. So three of us are like all like shaking our heads, like trying to figure out what just happened. The other three are just like, you guys are out of your minds. And yeah, it was definitely something that needs to be experienced. It was crazy. Just remember, guys, what T. Harbecker said is I'd rather look really, really hokey and be really, really ripped and look really, really cool and be really, really broke. Right? That's why I was willing to do <laughs> whatever I had to do in the beginning of pouncing or whatever. So anything left that you want to share um, on your heart for, for anybody, John, or... Um, I guess the biggest thing and like how I met Casey is like mostly because we got in so, so much personal development. And I think that's key in this business. Like I'm always doing some type of personal development program, always reading and always working on myself. And you hear it all the time that network marketing is just personal development with a compensation plan attached. And I couldn't find more truth to that. It's literally mastering ourselves and, and, getting over comparing ourselves to others. You're going to see other people who've gotten in a better position and may have more help and um, maybe going faster than you. And it's just not about comparing yourself to other people. It's about just focusing on yourself, focus on growing yourself, making yourself a better person on your team and, and just being the best version of you. And that's like one of the biggest things I've been learning, especially since I recommitted. And I mean, I, I've, I've been plugged into personal development for a long time now, but just, just working on yourself is huge. And um, another huge thing I always tell people when they're first getting started is just like hit the ground running, like link arms with your upline and you guys have an amazing upline and just go for it. Like, don't hold back. Don't like dip your toe in the water. If you want this, just go get it. Because when you build that huge momentum in the beginning, that like that, we always talk about 90 day game plans, just taking off. Like that's what you need to do to really take this business to the next level. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's just, it's an amazing opportunity we have, and this has just been awesome to be able to share with you guys and, um, meet Casey and do these crazy breathing exercises. You never know where this network marketing path is going to bring you. <laughs> <laughs> never know, never know. So, all right, my brother, thank you so much. And, um, I'm just going to touch you guys for events that are coming up. So for anybody, if you're coming to this Cepeda Express event, be sure that you are in the, um, in a thread. Um, we're definitely going to do some team stuff down there. I do have a breathing friend uh, in from Bali, Indonesia. Um, he will be there. Uh, and then uh, for anybody that's going doing the Brandon Barber event that Saturday too, be sure uh, to let me know if you're going to be at that one as well too, because it's going the whole weekend. So yeah, that's what's uh, coming up. And be sure NYKO tickets. 
and all that jazz. And uh, yeah, so John, thank you so much. I'll share this. Um, I know that you'll get me your YouTube link. Yeah, I'll message that to you right after this call. Okay, cool. So I'll share it with you guys. And uh, yeah, just let's all just send balls of energy of love to John. I can't unmute everybody on the webinar platform, but I'll get this posted. And thank you so much, John. Uh, you're just an absolute light and a doll. And mm, the My the Body Challenge photo. What? <laughs> thank you guys. Thank you for having me. Have a great night, everybody. All right. Bye, guys.